Hey, Jill Honeyearth here for another installment of Ask Jill. Uh, we're going to answer any questions that you've sent us on email, comments, and um, direct messages, because some of these are, are interesting for everybody to hear from. I brought Robert along um, for today's session of Ask Me Anything because uh, a few people wanted to know what he looked like rather than just a hand reaching in with, <laughs> with questions. Your so, basic 21st century merman here. <laughs> so this is my evolved merman okay. husband, Robert. So here we go. Ask me anything. I mean, like, should I ask anything? Yeah, well, the questions that people oh, send us on the internet. Because <laughs> I got a lot of questions for you, girl. Well, that's for another time, okay. but <laughs> go for it. All right, first question. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I can really, look, thanks for printing really big so I can see this without my glasses. I didn't print them, you I did. did. <laughs> Thank me for know. printing these really big so they, that I can really see them. Okay, all right, to, to, to be clear, I don't know what these questions no, she doesn't. are yet. No. <laughs> Uh, by the way, these questions came from uh, inquiries online through email, Twitter, uh, through Jill's new new <laughs> newsletter. Wow, that's hard to say. This is going to be the longest video ever because no, there's two of us in this no. now. So okay. let's just go to it. We'll go to question number one. <laughs> yes. Do I need a certification to dive using a dry suit? Oh, Good um, that's a really interesting one. I recommend it. Uh, do you need it? Like, I mean, there's no dry suit police that are going to say, hey, show me your card, you know, that kind of stuff. But um, quite frankly, there, there's a fair bit of uh, guidance that you need to dive a dry suit. And so um, here's what I would recommend. A dry suit is a big investment. Why don't you negotiate with the store where you buy the dry suit to throw in that uh, that dry suit class for you sometime mm -hmm. in the pool or in the open water somewhere with an instructor um, just to get you through the hiccups. Because otherwise, you know, there's a lot of things that could go wrong on your first dry suit dive and we don't want to see that happen. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. I've never dived a dry, a dry suit, by the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got enough problems with just my little shorty wetsuit. It's <laughs> all I can do to get myself in and out of that. I haven't even dived in about 10 years, so that'd be the Shh. first problem. <laughs> all right. Okay, question number two. Mm -hmm. Brand new to scuba, what size tanks should I buy? Oh, um, well, I mean, most people buy an aluminum 80 if they, if they want to own their own tanks. Um, I mean, you can rent for a while too. Um, I like steel tanks. I live in cold water. Um, well, I live in a cold water environment. <laughs> oh, Canada. <laughs> yes, I am Canadian. Um, so the steel gives me more negative buoyancy where the aluminum tank will shift from positive, um, or sorry, from negative to positive as it empties. So, um, this is a very long, convoluted answer. I know. Look I'm at me sorry. shaking my head as if I know what you're talking about. <laughs> An aluminum 80 is the most common tank that people buy, and is the most sort of cost-effective tank, I guess. Um, but there are a lot of there are a lot of things that that change when you change tanks. Like the air inside your tank weighs something, and so a tank will start with a, one given buoyancy and end with a much more positive buoyancy. Um, there's a chart online. Um, if you just type in Huron scuba tank comparison or tank scuba tank chart, it'll pop up because so many people refer to this chart. It'll give you all that information. How big is the tank? What's the diameter? What's the negative buoyancy? What's the positive buoyancy um, when empty? So that might help you make a good choice. Hey, you know what we could do? What? Put a link in the description. Oh, what a good idea! That's why you're the that's why you're the tech genius. Right. <laughs> we'll put a link in there. Tech genius on uh, post-it post notes. It notes. Nice. Okay. Next question. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Who wore it better, Cousteau or Steve Zuzu? <laughs> <laughs> From Life Aquatic. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Zuzu. Like, I mean, Zuzu. How do you say it? Zuzu. Zuzu. Yes. Yeah. I mean, but <sighs> that's hard. Early Cousteau was pretty damn cool, but um, 
I don't know. Just he seems to just never fails to make me smile. Every time I see a, a like a red watch cap, it's like I think of Steve Steve Zissou before I think of Gusto now. Sorry. Uh -huh, me too. <laughs> I purposely I I, I actually um, don't wear <laughs> the red the red watch caps that that have a scuba logo on them just for that reason. <laughs> feel self-conscious cool. like hey bill murray did it i i can't i cannot you know approach his, his his mastery of the red watch cap you know when you said who wore it best i thought oh my god where is this going and i was just about to blurt out trixie mattel <laughs> hi i'm trixie mattel your overgrown middle-aged gi joe <laughs> that makes you Katya. Katya, I'm Katya. Katya is almost a la la la. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, very few people are going to get that reference unless they're real fans of RuPaul's Drag Race. If you get that reference, like please us. send us a message. We want to know you. <laughs> All right, next one. Okay, next question. We're back talking about scuba, right? Yes. Okay. Do you use any kind of recovery drinks or supplements? Like, I imagine they mean like after a long dive or something, you know, you... Yeah. Um, well, interesting. Um, like I always try and stay hydrated and, um, you know, sometimes I'm doing like extremely physical expeditions and it becomes even more important. Um, and if I'm in a place like the Arctic and I'm eating like a completely different diet than I would normally eat, like there's not going to be any fresh veggies. Um, then I actually use, um, something by a company called ER, W, that's Eat, Race, Win is what that stands for. And it was um, uh, developed by um, someone who supported uh, pro cyclists. That's where I learned about it. Um, anyway, they have uh, some different formulations. I started using them for like like jet lag, like before a trip and then on the plane and then to recover from the jet lag. And then, and then they started developing um, something that was just more for like athlete performance and hydration. And, um, and I like the taste of the products and, um, they work for me. Yeah. Yeah. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Yeah. That's, that's really always a good important. idea. You know, you'll hear people say, um, uh, dehydration is a contributing factor to decompression illness. That's not exactly true. We haven't made a scientific study that says if you're diet dehydrated, you're more likely to get bent. But what we can say is that people who are suffering from decompression illness are almost always dehydrated. Hmm. So what's the cause and what's the effect? We can't really say for sure, but being hydrated is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Last question. Okay. Last question. Mm -hmm. This is a good one. Mm -hmm. Do these weird Kickstarter snorkely thingies work? Did you write this one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. I keep seeing all this stuff in my timeline. All You know, some weird contraption. It's some kind of a death wish that you're going to sign up and support on Kickstarter. I knew that someone <laughs> didn't type that one. I'm like, that that sounds a little bit too much like you. There's a lot of crap on Kickstarter, like like little rebreathers that are about this big that stick in your mouth. Yeah, James or, Bond. I don't know. what What's the snorkel thingy? Oh, the snorkel thingy was like a full face mask, remember? That had oh, like with the a, snorkel was, that comes out the front? Had like a, yeah, like a there's tons of people using yeah. those. In fact, yeah. there's tons of people that have now converted those to COVID masks yeah. um, for yeah. treatment. Um, the biggest danger of those things is the fact that you've got this big enclosed space on your face, right? And so you have an opportunity, same with a full face mask in scuba, you have an opportunity to build up carbon dioxide in that space, which isn't good. It would be the same thing as if you were, you know, trying to breathe from too long a snorkel, like um, carbon dioxide that builds up will eventually, you know, make you start to breathe faster, but you can actually even pass out from carbon dioxide, which is a bad thing to do if you're in the water. Yeah. Um, so that is the, the one big risk to be aware with. with any you know full face mask a full face mask for scuba has the oral nasal cavity like enclosed right so it pretty much seals so that you're separated from that entire space effectively and that's or you have a like a mouthpiece that you bite onto so you're really still breathing the same way as you do in a scuba um, system in and out of that mouthpiece um, as opposed to in and out of that entirely 
um, big um, space that can that can build up carbon dioxide. So do you remember that rebreather thing that was built? You know, it, it, yeah. you do remember that, right? It was mm -hmm. uh, it was mm -hmm. like a little couple cylinders, and they had it, it almost looked like it looked like it looked like handlebar grips for a bicycle. Yeah, and, you know that whole thing was a scam. Of course. I mean, the person yeah. the person collected millions of dollars and, and yeah. There was one video it. going around with a guy that had a device like that, and he swam around underwater for like five or six minutes or something like that, and and they made it look like like he was breathing from that device the whole time. And yeah. Yeah, no. that's the one. That's the one. It's now that's not to say that crowdfunding doesn't work, and it's not. There are a lot of very terrific, uh, mm -hmm. you know, startup mm -hmm. products, startup companies, and products that we've used crowdfunding for a documentary film at one time. So yeah, we you know when you're legitimately mm -hmm. producing a project or a mm -hmm. product, and you are, you know, hoping that you know people will get on board and help, you know, crowd fund the effort. Mm -hmm. that's, that's terrific. But when it comes to life support, I kind of don't want to just go with some Yahoo on the internet. I think I want to go to my local dive shop. Yeah, definitely. Right. Okay. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, that's it for, uh, that's all I have. That's another that's episode as, of... As long as I'm going to torture you today. <laughs> that's another episode of Ask Jill Anything. Um, so feel free to send more questions our way and let me know whether you want to see this guy in the next yeah. video. Sorry. <laughs> It's been nice knowing you all. <laughs> Thanks. Maybe he'll share some stories from his... Subscribe. Thumbs dives. up. If you love it, thumbs up. Hit the, uh, the notification bell. If you hate it, thumbs down. We understand. <laughs> all right. It'll just be Jill next time. Stay well and safe, everybody.